two, one. MDS two, we have ignition, we have a liftoff. Voyager then continued its journey past the planets of our solar system. Voyager 1 has made impossible discovery after 45 years in space. NASA's Voyager probes launched in 1977. Their significance in space exploration shows through the valuable information they provide, not just about the Earth, but also about our solar system and beyond. The capabilities of the Voyagers, despite their relatively limited technology compared to modern devices like smartphones and high-speed internet, are incredible. These Voyagers have made an unexpected and impossible discovery. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, let's know about what this discovery might be and what the Voyagers are currently doing. On September 5, 1977, a historic voyage began as Voyager 1 was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, propelled by the Titan 3E Centaur rocket. Just 15 days later, on August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 embarked on a parallel journey into the cosmos. Initially tasked with exploring the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn along with their moons, these intrepid probes surpassed their original mission, venturing into the farthest reaches of our celestial neighborhood. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have shattered records, enduring longer than any other spacecraft and journeying farther from Earth than any other human-made objects. Most astonishingly, both probes have transcended the boundaries of our solar system, entering interstellar space beyond the Sun's magnetic field and earning the distinction of being the first human-made objects to do so. This journey has given scientists really important information. Even though they are over 12 billion miles away from Earth, these special space probes keep surprising scientists with what they find. Recently, they made a discovery that was so unexpected, scientists couldn't have guessed it beforehand. We'll learn more about it later. The things the Voyager probes have accomplished are truly amazing. When they first looked at the moons of Jupiter and Saturn more than 40 years ago, it amazed scientists and changed what they thought about these far-off worlds. They thought these moons would be quiet and covered in craters like our moon but they turned out to be full of geological activity. Voyager 2, one of the probes, did some really important things during its journey. In 1986, it became the first spacecraft to go by Uranus, and just three years later it flew past Neptune. Even now, it's the only spacecraft to have followed that path. As the spacecraft kept traveling through space, NASA has taken steps to make sure they can keep working for a long time. They've turned off parts that aren't essential, like heaters, to save energy. This means they can keep going strong until at least 2030. For the scientists and engineers who have been part of this amazing journey from the very start, the end of the Voyager missions is a mix of happiness and sadness. They've put in a lot of effort and time, and the project has gone way beyond what they first hoped. The information that the Voyagers have sent back has taught us so much led to many scientific discoveries and inspired lots of people to be interested in space. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were not regular spacecraft. They were specially built to stay very steady while in space. They spun much slower than the hour hand of a clock, which helped them take clear pictures and collect data as they zoomed through space. Even before they got to the outer planets, their amazing cameras impressed scientists and the public. They started sending back pictures of Jupiter while still far away from it. These early pictures showed Jupiter's swirling clouds and the famous Great Red Spot, and they made the folks at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory really happy. But the big discovery came when they found out that Jupiter's moon Io was super active with volcanoes. Io, a bit bigger than our moon, turned out to be the most volcanically active place in our whole solar system. The spacecraft's tools picked up strange signals from Io, and the pictures they took confirmed it. These pictures showed tall volcanic eruptions and a surface covered in volcanic stuff. One of Io's volcanoes, Pele, even shot up material 30 times higher than Mount Everest, 
and covered an area as big as France. The Voyagers took over 33,000 pictures of Jupiter and its moons, showing off the planet's beauty and the amazing variety of landscapes on its moons. Before they made their recent surprising discovery, these two space probes have been finding amazing things since they first launched. One of the most shocking was the finding of rings around Jupiter. These rings were pretty faint, but they were a big surprise and made Jupiter even more interesting. Plus, Voyager 2 found out that Europa, one of Jupiter's 53 named moons, had an icy shell that might be more than 60 miles thick. This challenged what people thought about these faraway space objects and made scientists really curious about whether icy moons could be places where life might exist. After leaving Jupiter, the Voyagers got a boost from the planet's gravity, which helped push them towards Saturn. Without this extra push, they wouldn't have been able to escape the sun's pull and keep going into space. Voyager 1 went close to Saturn's moon Titan, which has a hazy, orangey atmosphere that scientists found fascinating. They studied its complicated chemistry more. Then Voyager 1 turned upwards away from the flat plane where the planets orbit and started its journey beyond our solar system. Voyager 2 went on a different adventure. It visited the farthest planets from the Sun. In 1986, it passed by Uranus, where it discovered 10 new moons, increasing the total count of moons around the planet. Three years later, Voyager 2 reaches Neptune, showing off the amazing features of this faraway ice giant. The Voyager spacecrafts have made some incredible findings. For example, when Voyager 2 visited Neptune, it recorded super-fast winds, faster than anywhere else in our solar system. It got really close to Neptune and gave us never-before-seen information about the planet. One of Neptune's big moons, Triton, turned out to be super, super cold, even colder than anywhere on Earth. And it had some really cool features like ice volcanoes. There was a famous scientist named Carl Sagan who was part of the team that worked on Voyager's cameras. He really wanted to take one last set of pictures before the cameras were turned off. These pictures would be like a special gift to us from very far away in space. His idea worked, and on Valentine's Day in 1990, Voyager 1 took a bunch of pictures, including one called Pale Blue Dot, which shows Earth from really, really far away. The Voyagers still use something called 8-track tapes, which were really popular in the 1970s. These tapes hold important scientific data about outer planets and space between stars. Even though they might seem old, they've proven to be really tough and reliable. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 needed a special trick to go as far as they did. They used something called gravity assist maneuvers. This is like a cosmic dance with big planets to get extra speed. Imagine if you got a little push from a really strong friend to help you go faster on a skateboard. That's kind of like what happened with the Voyagers and the planets. To stay in touch with the Voyagers, NASA used something called the Deep Space Network. It's like a huge set of antennas, like giant radio dishes, located all around the world. These antennas helped us talk to the Voyagers even when they were really, really far away. So after the Voyager spacecrafts went really far into space, they still needed to talk to us back on Earth. Imagine sending a message to a friend on a faraway island, but it takes a really long time for your message to get there. That's kind of what happens with Voyager. It sends a message, but by the time it gets to us, it's really weak. To make sure we hear Voyager's message, we use something called the Deep Space Network. DSN. It's like a big set of super-sensitive antennas. The antennas listen for Voyager's faint signals and make them strong enough for scientists to understand. The DSN doesn't just listen, it can also send messages back to Voyager. This is important because sometimes scientists need to tell Voyager what to do or change its plans. Voyager had to cross a special border called the Heliopause. It's like a line that separates where our sun's influence ends and the rest of space begins. Imagine it as a fence in space. 
When Voyager got to the heliopause, it found something surprising. The scientists thought the magnetic field around Voyager would change, but it didn't. This was a bit puzzling and made them rethink some things. Thanks to Voyager, we now think that our sun's area in space is changing because of big explosions from old stars. This created a kind of boundary with mixed up magnetic fields. It's like a wavy area at the beach. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are still traveling through space, and they're going in different directions. They might keep going for millions of years. They might even meet up with other star systems one day, carrying a message from Earth. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys for staying with us till the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give a big thumbs up.